going to read something which these people have already heard once, <laughs> but you haven't. Read the other room. <laughs> <Some> <laughs> oh yeah, you heard the other room. <laughs> well, these are the full presentations, um, and in this part of the competition, you are taking on a fic a fictional business identity. You know, don't know yet who you are, but you'll tell us. And assigning a fictional business identity <coughs> to the judges. Please make sure everyone knows who you are and who they are <coughs> before you begin. In other words, make sure you know you, you let us know who we are. Okay? Well, I, we don't want to have an identity crisis. <laughs> So we want, we're going to be in character, eh? like if we're the board of directors, you know, tell us we're the board of directors of this company, whatever. You'll have 25 minutes plus a five minute cushion, you know, extra five minutes, uh, to make your presentation and to describe the legal, financial, and ethical dimensions of the problem. And to recommend a solution that passes muster on all three of these areas. Understand? During this time, teams will be uninterrupted. When you are finished, the judges will ask you questions for 20 minutes. I will ask the first question and turn it over to the other judges. During the Q&A, both you and the judges stay in character, you know, stay who you are. This is a, like a play. After the Q&A, the judges will give you feedback outside the role play. Some important things to keep in mind. The ethical aspects of your analysis are the most important part. However, these should be described in simple, common sense fashion. Don't use technical, philosophical terminology. I won't understand it. Okay. Or basing your argument on religious or theological grounds. Like, this argument is good because God spoke to me last night. No, that won't work. All right. Similarly, any member uh, of the team reading his or her part, like I'm doing right now, will be um, consider it will be a considered a major mistake. Uh, but you may use notes or powerpoints, whatever. During this presentation, every member of the team must participate. Okay. You can't just have one person sit there. Everybody's there. Oh, okay. Any 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 questions? Okay. Uh, so before we start, why don't you tell us? Now you can stand up and roll. Oh, like <laughs> Oh yeah, I do have some more. My name is Valerie. Yeah. I come from Russia and represent here Global Business School Barcelona. This is my team. This is Anton. He comes from Russia as well. This is Salman. He comes from Azerbaijan. And Anton, he's from Belarus. So our team is kind of the team of post Soviet countries. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we have taken the topic that uh, that show okay. us how the business develops in okay, uh, such countries. We're going to introduce ourselves. <laughs> yeah. My name is Mike Hoffman. I'm from Bentley University. And we'll start over there. Yeah, uh, Kyle Hoff Power with Entergy Corporation, headquartered here in New Orleans. Uh, and I'm, uh, I support the ethics and compliance program at our company. I'm Allison Howie. I'm also with Entergy Corporation, um, within the legal department. And now I'm part of ethics and compliance, uh, managing counsel, and information governance. And I'm Smith Vina Gavin. I am with the Ethics and Compliance Initiative, or uh, formerly known as uh, the Ethics and Compliance Officer Association, which uh, we're very close with uh, my government, and uh, we're based out of uh, Boston or just outside um, Boston. 
Okay, shall you start your thing? <laughs> That's okay, I'll do it. 
I can't believe I'm actually helping somebody do something technologically difficult. Which is where the democratic transition hasn't finished yet, and where we can see a very interesting um, development on business. Um, so we took the case that took place in Russia. Um, our topic is called Hindu Forest Destruction and Need R01. I'm sorry, just one quick question. Who are we? Oh, we? You our are? team. How no, no, <laughs> no, who are you? Yeah in the role in the case. Are you a consulting ah, yeah, group? Sure, we'll, we'll say about that. Okay, and, and we and you're both you'll tell us who we are? Both sure. of us. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this case touched the issue of construction, um, building of uh, infrastructure, roads and so on. That's why we decided to appeal mostly to the executives of construction and concession companies. Um, so we pretend to be like a uh, consul consulting company. Uh, consulting, consulting specialists, and you are the executives of such companies or kind of organization that represents the executives of the uh, construction companies all over the world. So, okay, so we're a, a group of representatives from construction companies yeah. Yeah. that we make a recommendation to based on what we're hearing. And you have to start the forest. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> start. What Hindu forest is actually? It's a huge forest in the uh, northern part of Moscow, um, which is a kind of green belt of Moscow and it protects Moscow from uh, pollution of um, industries, cars, and so on. Um, many specialists from Greenpeace, from other eco-friendly organizations um, uh, have already um, said, assessed the importance of this forest. And uh, the animals that live in this forest are entitled in the Red Book, so they are very, some of them are very rare, and then and they are at the edge of extinction. So there are these animals, some of them. World. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some plants as well. Yeah. So what is more, this uh, protective green belt protects Moscow from um, forest uh, from forest fires. Uh, which we have witnessed, for example, in summer uh, 210. You can see that. So. Uh, yeah, what actually happened? Uh, 2.4 billion uh, dollars road, high-speed road, uh, was proposed to go through this forest in order to connect two capitals, so-called capitals of Russia, Moscow, and Saint Petersburg. Uh, for this purpose, the part of the forest was cut down. And uh, the construction triggered large protests, which turned violent in July 2010. So yeah, Hinky Forest, uh, where it's situated? So as we can see, uh, there is Moscow and St. Petersburg. The normal road is, um, is uh, the gray one. It takes about 11 hours to get. And the proposed road will, will have like 9.52 minutes. Uh, time to get from Moscow to St. Petersburg. Let's look closely to Moscow. It's situated in northwest of Moscow. So here it is. Yeah, Moscow. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, here it is, Pinky Forest. So the road actually will take place here. It, the forest was cut down here. So there were alternative routes to this road because it was not only option of authorities and business groups. As we can see, the green area to be sacrificed and a number of buildings to be destroyed are two charts. So the option number three is that option that they, cho that they chose. Actually, they could choose any of them, but they choose this one. 
So. Yeah, now uh, about uh, some uh, chronological facts. In uh, 2004, <coughs> Russian uh, officials uh, decided uh, to build a tall motorway uh, from Moscow to St. Petersburg. Then in uh, 2005, the route uh, through Himki Forest was uh, accepted uh, behind uh, the uh, closed doors and uh, public uh, hearings were arranged. Uh, and uh, also people uh, didn't uh, get uh, right information about it. In uh, 2006, a um, huge uh, part of uh, Himki Forest uh, were, uh, was uh, reserved uh, for this uh, motorway. Uh, and uh, in 2007, uh, uh, preparation uh, works uh, uh, were started uh, in uh, the forest park, and uh, most uh, a lot of people uh, really uh, don't like, uh, didn't like uh, this uh, project. And uh, local people uh, created a movement uh, to defend uh, Himki Forest, and uh, also a new forest code uh, bans all uh, works in the forest parks. Uh, uh, so uh, any works uh, became uh, really completely uh, illegal. Uh, however, uh, then uh, this uh, uh, code uh, transferred to uh, agricultural uh, agriculture ministry, and uh, people uh, had an opportunity to change. Uh, so actually, because that a previously forest was in the jurisdiction of uh, forest agency. And after it was changed, it transferred under the jurisdiction of agricultural ministry. So, uh, forest ministry couldn't do anything to stop this uh, destruction. In 2008, uh, there was an accident. Uh, someone uh, tried uh, to kill a famous uh, Russian uh, journalist, uh, Mikhail Biketov, because uh, he wrote a lot about uh, this problem. And uh, in 2009, there was uh, there were uh, elections of mayor of Himki, and uh, a candidate of uh, movement uh, to defend Himki Forest uh, gets 16 uh, uh, percent of uh, votes. Um, yeah, it shows that people don't really like the idea to destroy this forest, and uh, service have already been made. Uh, so, uh, activists uh, started uh, to uh, negotiate uh, with uh, European banks uh, like uh, European Bank of uh, Reconstruction and uh, Development and European Investment Bank. Uh, they uh, promised uh, to uh, cooperate uh, with all stakeholders and uh, to respect uh, each opinion. Opinions. Uh, in uh, 2008, uh, these uh, European banks uh, decided uh, to skip this project. And in December 2014, uh, the first part of the road uh, was opened, and uh, since 2010 till uh, 2014, uh, activists understood the uh, uselessness of their actions uh, because uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, the construction had already started yeah. and it was really useless to do something. Some protests were held but were held but still nothing happened and nowadays the road already exists. Yeah. But not uh, the full not full road but only just just the part. So further. So um, actually uh, the, this project was uh, designed as a public public private partnership project. And it, sh it should have been a real breakthrough because it was one of the first uh, projects in Russia designed as a public-private partnership. So um, it is rather, rather unusual for Russia. But still, as we say in Russia, they should have done something good, but it, when they did, it is usual. Um, so in Russian realities, uh, the merging of government and business um, became a real Leviathan, like Hobbes Leviathan, that smashes everything on its way. Because um, business wants to make money and government doesn't want to 
and government wants to build the roads. So nobody cares about um, ecology. So here are the stakeholders. We can. Yeah, there are some stakeholders. As we can see, there is a one stakeholder called Shermetyva Airport. Ironically, the head of Shermetyva Airport was also a head of a transport ministry who proposed to build this road. So he had uh, some sort of an interest, deep interest in the building of this road. Also, we can see the European Bank for Construction and Development and the European Investment Bank that later withdrew, withdrew from the project as uh, protest in Europe uh, took place. Also, one of the main uh, stakeholders here is Winchy Company. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a f French concession and construction company, kind of old one. Uh, it's the largest construction company in the world by revenue. Uh, yeah. And ironically, uh, Leonardo da Vinci once told that whoever does not appreciate life is not worth it. So yeah, kind of a good thing. And if you see the website of Vinci Company, we can see that they uh, pretend to be really very, very friendly and yeah. uh, comply with all sustainable development principles, but still, yeah. here, nothing works in yeah. this world. For instance, here it reads that every large infrastructure project generates an impact on the environment in which it's built. So yeah, they understand it, but they do the opposite thing. I'll make stress on the participation of Minchin in this project because it's a European company. When Russian companies do the same, it can be some kind of somehow understood because a Russian the Russian society is not so developed in the, in the ethical dimension. Uh, let's talk about some financial factors. The whole cost of road will be was 2.7 billion dollars, and there were three stages. First stage was the preparation of the road. It will be cost almost 300, 300 million dollars. The providing the contest for the right to sign the contract it was almost three million dollars, and the rest of the money was for the construction. Okay. Um, then. There are eight one percent of this contract was signed between the Northwest Concession Company and most most rest. Gener there are the general contractors. The six percent of this contract was between the Northwest Concession Company and Winchi. Seven percent were uh, on on loans. Two percent were the bank emissions, the governmental banks bank institutions which help to construct this road and 4%, 9.2 million dollars were other expenses. And in comparison with the other roads where, which were built in Europe, in America, in other states, the Moscow San Petersburg road will cost 50 dollars. However, Milan Napoli road, which is uh, almost the same distance, costs two times cheaper than the Moscow St. Petersburg road. And uh, the payback period, the government told that in first 18 years of opening the road, they will lose 8.8 .8 billion rubles. It's almost 180 million dollars. So actually, the payback doesn't exist nowadays because the road uh, will not uh, be paid, up, uh, paid back. So they will lose money and oh, sorry, they will lose money uh, and lose what they have spent on construction as well. Yeah. Yeah, as for legal violations, as I said before, uh, the head of the Sheremetyevo International Airport was also the, uh, the transport minister, and he proposed these, um, uh, this offer to build the road through Hinki Forest in his interest, because this road uh, had to border the international airport. So the the uh, the competition for the signing this contract was also kind of unfair because one of the uh, members of the jury of the uh, of, of this competition uh, was a member of the Sheremetyevo Airport as well. 
Uh, yeah, as we said before, forest code of Russia was changed and uh, transferred to the agricultural ministry in order to avoid any problems with forest codes, as um, forest code uh, ministers were not happy with this uh, because many. Uh, um, because it was said many times that uh, if we cut down, if they cut down these forests, they will have a lot of problems with the ecology. They disregard that. And as was already said, there were several human rights violations. So the, the police didn't didn't allow the people to meet to assemble. There were several times when the people were beaten up and arrested, and some people were tortured. And uh, all these uh, human rights violations are going across the, the bills, the conventions that Russia signed about the human rights. Uh, for example, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Universal Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. And here are the some articles. So there are some basic articles that all human beings are born to be free. Nobody can be tortured, nobody can be murdered, and everybody they have the right of freedom of their speech, of their thoughts, and everybody has the right of peaceful assembly and association. There are some more. Yeah. Here you can see that the rights of protesters are not uh, respected. respected yet. And the rights of people who live in this area as well. Yeah, there are also some sort of funny but sad things about the cases because it's Russia and some absurd things are happening there. For example, the day before public discussions, some issues were held. Door locks of two prominent uh, activists of Hindi Forest Defense were broken down in order for them to uh, to stay in their houses, in their flats. It was yeah. made on purpose by unknown, unknown people. Also, uh, there are some other things. Uh, Himke Forest activist was accused of illegal agitation because he was sticking leaflets uh, for defense of Himke Forest. So the police officers arrested him and uh, detained him for seven hours in the police department and forced him, uh, like they were threatening him, abusing him, and was offering, not demanding, but offering him to clean a public toilet. So um, here we uh, start with environmental issues. Um, as we have already said, this forest is very important and protects Moscow from lots of pollution. And um, what is more interesting is that um, not only the cutting down or cutting off of this forest is dangerous, but also fragmentation, what has been actually done. Um, it was the only place where the locals could enjoy nature and go for a walk with their kids. And uh, uh, in general, um, the ecosystem was damaged a lot and uh, animals suffered because they lost their homes and uh, the fragmentation of the road um, uh, doesn't allow them to, um, to migrate from one side of the road Another. That's why poor little lynx had no home anymore. Yeah. Activists call this animal Sophie. Yeah, yeah Sophie. Sophie. She, she lost his, her home, she's sitting here and doing nothing. Uh, so, um, actually, um, the um, the reconstruction of the road violated several principles, several declarations that Russia has signed. We can see them. The Circum Declaration of the Human Environment, Rio de Janeiro Declaration, and Universal Declaration of Animal Welfare. As we remember, some of these animals are um, entitled to the Red Book. They are rare, they are on the edge of extinction. Yeah, there were a lot of uh, violations of international documents. One of them is uh, Universal Declaration uh, on Animal Welfare. And in logical one, we can see that animals are sometimes beings and so their welfare should be respected. Also, Stockholm Declaration on the Human Environment. 
Uh, we chose uh, three articles, main articles. And uh, first one that uh, man has uh, the fundamental right uh, to uh, freedom, uh, good conditions of life, and uh, that uh, people uh, must uh, protect environment uh, to, uh, for present and future generations. Next one is uh, uh, that uh, natural resources like air, water, flora and fauna uh, also uh, must be uh, safeguarded uh, for the benefit of present and future generations. And the third one is uh, that uh, nature cons uh, conservation, uh, including uh, wildlife, must uh, therefore receive importance in playing for economic development. So, yeah. Um, we have already started with talking about the public-private partnership and its importance. Uh, here I would like to say that um, really, nowadays, public-private partnership projects um, can, be said, can be regarded as um, one of the most uh, profitable and um, preferable for business and for government both. Um, and um, in our case, everything has gone wrong, and we should understand why. Um, so, uh, as we um, appeal to the business, um, we really uh, realize that uh, one of the most um, guilty uh, stakeholders in this case is business, because government uh, can do nothing in this case if business doesn't give money. If business doesn't give money, government will not allow such projects because they will have no money to do that. That's right. um, so what should be done in public private partnership projects? Why is it a good thing? It reduces costs. In our case, in nothing. Um, it is extremely costly. Um, moreover, now we need money to recover this forest, to um, build some, um, to grow some new trees there. Um, to protect animals there, so uh, our private partnership should, pr uh, should uh, provide better services for locals. Nothing has been done, road is still closed, only part of it works. So it provides competition, however in our case uh, there was no competition, only one company um, took place in this uh, competition, took part in this competition. <coughs> And public private partnerships should um, resolve some social problems in society. But here it is, it leads only to social tensions. Uh, here we can see how international companies uh, were interested in uh, these projects. Uh, organizations like uh, Greenpeace or Russian uh, World Wild uh, Federation, uh, European Parliament, uh, French uh, Senate, uh, Senate, and uh, also European banks. Uh, they, uh, these uh, organizations uh, try to do all possible uh, to uh, stop uh, this uh, project, uh, but only European banks uh, decided uh, to skip it. So yeah, here we can see the <coughs> meeting between the uh, French uh, party of French Greens and Russian activists from the ACA defense movement. So yeah, they had this meeting, they discussed it, and um, it took place before the um, European Investment Bank and European Bank Reconstruction um, refused to take place, uh, to, to take part in this project, so they uh, were discussing how to make them do that, actually. Uh, yeah, Russian government uh, changed uh, the forest, uh, the forest boat uh, because uh, they really uh, wanted to, to build uh, this road. Uh, also, Sheremetyevo Airport uh, extremely wanted uh, this road because uh, it's uh, profitable for them. And uh, European uh, partners and uh, Vinci company, uh, they uh, didn't uh, respect uh, uh, opinions and uh, they uh, didn't uh, want uh, to cooperate with all stakeholders uh, like uh, organizations, uh, movements uh, to defend uh, Himki Forest, and uh, etc. So, yeah, I wanted to um, make stress on something else. It is the role of the person in this case. Uh, it is Evgenia Chirikova. 
the leader of uh, Echo Defense Movement, uh, the uh, movement of the defense of Himki Forest. Um, she was an amazing person. She is an amazing person. Um, so you can see that. Um, yeah. Uh, she was um, threatened to, um, some people came to her house to take her children, saying that she was abusing them. So she uh, had to move to Estonia to escape from that. Um, she uh, won several awards for her actions, for what she has done. And now uh, she's going to go on to uh, protect um, maybe some other places there are under the um, that are threatened, um, being destructed. So that's it. she was several times uh, arrested, intimidated, and so on and so forth. Now she lives in Estonia, and uh, she has her website. She has a, uh, she works for a newspaper, and she still um, tries to do something, but it's difficult. So yeah, have her set her address. Now we um, go to our. Um, Um, how to prevent such situations in the future? So what should businesses do? What should we do all? Uh, so, so we should propose some new codes of conduct and to propose them to, to, to act accordingly because they have, Vinci company also has this code of conduct, but they don't um, do nothing about that. They, it's just written on the paper and so on. Uh, also, organizations like Global Complex should have uh, more functions, for example, taking fees for companies who don't have to comply with <coughs> their sustainable development principles and so on. Yeah, Vinci is a member of Global yeah, Complex, yeah. but still, Global Complex can nothing to do with that. They can just uh, tell them not to participate, but they, but they participate. Yeah, also, tenders should be. Uh, should be given in a free and a fair way and mediated by international organizations, some business organizations somehow, because uh, this tender for this road was given uh, without any competition at all, because they had only one company in the, in the competition, and their de jury was partly uh, uh, one of the stakeholders of the building of this road. And also, we should develop uh, some sort of responsible corporate citizen culture and image, so the company won't do the same thing again and won't uh, let them do that, uh, do such things in different countries. Because, for instance, Vinci company uh, won't have done that thing in France or in Europe or anywhere else, but in Russia, because it will, it will okay for that. If business doesn't want to be responsible, now nobody can force them to do that. Yeah. So they can just um, um, change their position in this world. So yeah, um, about this case, what should have been done and um, to make it a bit different. So the stakeholders uh, should have participated in such case. They should have. Um, talk to uh, uh, Russian government, to other stakeholders, to banks, to change the route. Nobody has done that. They pretended that they uh, don't know that, that they uh, cannot do that, but they could. So they should have uh, uh, cooperated with activists, with international organizations, to show that they are not indifferent. And uh, for sure, corruption is one of the most important and most dangerous things in this case. So yeah, and now, now nearly nothing can be changed because the road is already exists, the part of the road through this forest. Uh, but um, we are just afraid that some kind of infrastructure will be built near the road, as it always happens in Russia and other countries as well. Uh, so we really um, want business to be responsible to realize that it cannot be like that. So yeah, and uh, a lot of money uh, is needed to uh, recover the forest, to save the animals, to uh, grow some new trees, uh, to make the, um, the protective um, 
shields, shields yeah, of, uh, to protect uh, the forest from the sound of the road and so on. So uh, stakeholders can and must uh, participate in these actions. Um, and yeah, the government has given some uh, some of money for that, but um, no, nothing has started yet. So business should uh, do something as well. So thank you very much. Well, talk about being right on time. <laughs> uh, perfect timing. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, we'll hold our applause for later because we're going right into the 20-minute uh, Q&A portion. Okay, did you do the 20 minutes? I can tell you, you know, when it's 20 is up, okay? Um, let, me, let me start by asking the first question. Oh, yeah, it stopped. Yeah, thanks. And, and I apologize for my phone going off. You know, I should remember to turn that off. Um, this is clearly uh, an environmental ethics issue, and that was a major part of your presentation, is that uh, nature has rights, animals have rights, and that's very important. Um, could you, um, could you elaborate a little bit on the relationship between the environmental ethics aspect of the case and the business aspect of the case. Are you saying that um, the environmental ethical aspects of the case uh, certainly affect business economically, socially, what have you. I just want you to connect those two ethical, applied ethics areas together, the environmental ethics and the business ethics part of it together for me, please. So, yeah, um, I would say, I would start like um, this. <coughs> Uh, so, um, nowadays, um, as we know, the um, ecology is being very much damaged. And um, we know that uh, if we go on like this, in 100 years there will be no resources, and there will be some of them, but they will be depleted very much. Uh, no fresh air, no fresh water, and for sure everybody uh, will not benefit from that. Businesses as well. Uh, how they will get oil, uh, coal, and all these resources to make their business. And that's the first answer. <laughs> so, of course, the, uh, that affects them very much. And the second thing is that nowadays, uh, not only governments should take care of uh, such social things, because nowadays the huge corporations, uh, multinational corporations, they sometimes have more power than um, governments. And um, if governments should take care, if we say that governments should take care of uh, people, of nature, why shouldn't the most powerful things in this world do that as well? But nobody can force them to do that. They should think uh, themselves. They should do it themselves. And it's the most um, difficult things here. So, yeah. Mm, the first thing is that they will be affected. The second thing is that they should do it. I would also like to add that they had a choice to, to build another road on another way. So yeah. from the perspective of uh, environmental ethics, they've done a terrible thing as they not only they damaged the sentient forest, sentient beings of this forest, they also uh, destroyed the ecosystem as well because this forest, uh, it's, mm, it, it's called, uh, in Russian sometimes it's called the lungs of Moscow. Mm -hmm. As Moscow is really polluted area, uh, and it's a really big city as we know, and it's really polluted, 
and there are a lot of industrial zones everywhere. They could have built some new road that um, they had one alternative way that uh, ecologists proposed, which is uh, which was near to a railway station. It was kind of far away from the forest itself, but it was like uh, it was to be to be built near this railway station in the rails. Uh, so, but they chose to build it through the forest in, in, the, in terms of interests of business, especially Sharon Meteo Airport, because you know, the transport ministry is the head of the, the board of directors of Sharon Meteo Airport as well. So, they chose a kind of unethical and environmentally unfriendly way. Uh, and we called our project Looking for Destruction and Need or the One. Yes. We realize that when business um, do something and they construct something, for sure it has some damage for nature. But it should be done wisely. It should, it should be, be done not stupidly like in this way. It was just a want of some people, some group of people to earn more money. Um, no social dimension, no ethical dimension, no nothing. Yeah. Yeah. People's opinions just are also want. disregarded. Because well. we needed because we needed this role because it was very convenient for many people. But it should have been done in a different manner. Thank you. Was was there any public support for the road? And because I, I hear you talking about, I mean, it sounds like all the public cared about was the, the ecological aspect. But you know, uh, you know, from the construction industry, I mean, I'm I'm here to provide jobs for people. Um, and I'm, I'm interested in, uh, you know, what are the other ethical dimensions of the problem uh, besides just the ecological ones? You know, there there, there must be competing uh, uh, concerns and desires, and I'm not totally sold on the concept that it's just some greedy folks who are trying to make as much money as possible. I I, I have to ask if there, you know, are some other benefits to the road that it may bring, and uh, from an ethical standpoint. Yeah, first of all, according to some servers, um, people themselves, they say that they need this road. Not actually this one, but they need um, a good road to travel from Moscow to St. Petersburg. Because it takes a lot of time if we are using uh, the previous one. Uh, yeah, can I interrupt you for yeah. a bit? For, for instance, uh, as you can see, the blue one is the proposed road. It's already built. So it was like that. And here we, uh, we, we see like E105. It, it is already existed road that okay. goes to St. Petersburg as well. Okay. So uh, it's kind of the difference between these two roads that this kind of shortcut, but it, this shortcut is for like, say 40 minutes, not much. So they also uh, they only build this road to to pass through yeah to pass through international airport. So the blue road is the one that, that goes yeah, through the, blue the forest. Road is the one that uh, passes. And it's a shortcut as compared to the the more straight road because maybe there aren't as many the stops on it and it's a high speed road. Yeah. The, the main problem of this road E105 was that it was old and it was connected with some Moscow road. Yeah, it is very small. Yeah, and it's it really small wide, and, and narrow. It's not enough. Yeah, small and narrow. That is why. But uh, people of, for instance, city of Himki, city of Novokudny, and some other city, cities that are bordering uh, this forest were not happy with building, uh, with the uh, cutting out the forest. There were many polls that suggested that. So. Yeah, so in general, it was a very good idea to build a new road. Yeah. So this road, I'm not actually sure that it is a highway. It has a lot of turns. Yeah. It has lights, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Did the officials involved give any reasons for why they chose this route over the alternate routes? Because I hear you saying that mm -hmm. you know they, there were multiple, and I I appreciate that slide that showed that there were various yeah, sure. options. Uh, yes, but were there reasons given? Uh, any kind of reason that could be considered reasonable why some options were not viable and why this was a, a better option? Uh, that is the question because uh, all these public hearings were closed. No, uh, no people from activist movements were allowed to enter it and it was chosen just uh, as we can say, it's as we can imagine, awesome. because of the Sheremetyevo airport officials. Yeah. Because this option goes very near, very close to the airport. 
and uh, it can um, help to earn more money. The airport is there. The airport uh, is here. Right here. Yes. So and the road borders. So the other options did not go to uh, the The problem airport? was that they, uh, they didn't stress on options, on alternative options, because public hearings in Russia are not public. Yeah. They're like but closed the thing was that, uh, <laughs> so yeah, the purpose of the road was not to connect Moscow with airport. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it was just one stakeholder who what? appeared suddenly. Yeah. The, uh, our uh, the Minister of Transport, who is one of the directors of Chernobyl Airport, he just could do that, and he did that. Yeah, and and they didn't even explain that, because ecologists proposed many things that to build some alternative ways of the road, but they just <coughs> ignore that. It's Russian. Because all of them were not going through the Chernobyl yeah, Airport. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They just needed this road to go yeah, through. To go through. Through. And the, the director of the airport did not uh, make the art, didn't make arguments, a uh, compelling argument uh, for why it would be beneficial for the road to go through or near the airport. Oh, he uh, said. Totally beneficial minutes. for airport, for the directors yeah. of airport, because they will get money for that as well. They will take part in this. When, uh, when they were asked why there's uh, building the road from the forest, they were telling not why, but it will be 10 lanes, it will be good, like it something like that. Like one, one of the most they were exciting public-private pro partnership projects yeah. in Russia. Yeah, it so was they the like best road, European standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but not really reason why. There were no reasons. And just one more question for me. Was the, was the forest totally obliterated? Or was it totally... Or, or it was what? partly where you can see this road, there, there the forest was cut down. But the problem is that even the small fragmentation of this forest, like, like that, yeah. yeah, it would like destroy the whole ecosystem. They, they divided the forest into two pieces. Yeah, yeah into parts. Yeah. Two parts. Right? And, and you're parts. saying that the, the a separated forest is not viable? Yeah, it's yeah, not sure, viable. Sure. Because there are uh, some migrations. Yeah, and migrations of animals and... Um, and there were numerous reports of uh, Greenpeace, of WWF, that showed that even the small fragmentation of forest would be like, fatal for mm -hmm. this world. And the most dangerous thing is that um, usually in Russia, when uh, somebody builds the road, uh, after that, lots of infrastructure will be built nearby. Yeah. So it will mean total destruction. Yeah. Maybe we are losing our forest. <laughs> Okay, I have a question. Well, first of all, um, y'all are fighting a lot of different battles here. So I'm assuming that you're speaking to, or you want to speak to the client, the, the executives, because you feel like because the government's not going to step up and do their part, it's up to us to police them, or you know, what do you really want? Do you, you're expecting you know, contractors yeah. to bring up the environmental issues, you know, to um, bring up, you know, to address your concerns because government's not going to do it. I mean, is that really the argument here, that we have to do it because the government's not going to do it? Uh, okay, um, I'll try to answer. Um, governments can do that, but in such countries as Russia, as many other post-Soviet countries and many other all over the world, the government sometimes is weaker than economic actors. Sometimes it happens, and in our case, it is like that. So if a business is ready to give money for the project, government is ready to allow everything. And, yeah. Also, for example, the Vinci company, it won't do that in other yes. countries, yes. but it is doing it in Russia. Why? Because in Russia, government put economic interest in, in first place. Yeah. So the Vinci company's fault was that they accepted all these kind of rules of the game. So they get the money and they build the road. And they didn't 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 want to think about some ecosystems, something like that, that people are happy and so on. But you know, looking at it, I'm surprised that they that the government wouldn't step in because they're they're gonna make money out of the way. And people are gonna bid on the contract. Um, so I think I think there's a huge issue with government regulation. Um, 
basically opening it up to, to bidding. Yeah. Yeah, but because, you know, you're right, contractors do have the money, they're going to put forth the money, they want to win the project, but at the same time, they're willing to, I think they're willing to play by the rules. So I, you know, I don't think you can totally put this off on the contractors and say, well, you all have to do it, or you have to do it right, or not participate at all. Um, no, it's, you know, it's Russia. You can't yeah. do it. Yeah, the thing was that if Vinci um, didn't want to take part in this um, contract, maybe something has been done because uh, there will be more um, more public um, appeal, more public. Uh, yeah, if uh, this company will, so if this company will uh, refuse to take part, the project will be uh, cancelled. Not cancelled, but delayed. At least delay. Other partners will yeah. see that nobody is doing business with them. And it will yeah. affect them and they will have no interest. Because in Russia, what has been done? Uh, the forest code was changed uh, to make it uh, uh, to make, make it, it legal. Respond to very good, first of all. Um, secondly, when, uh, maybe you know, first of all, have, uh, Putin was the president, then Putin couldn't do it anymore because he has, he has been president two times. Then he stepped down. Yeah, and then he stepped down, and Medvedev was president. So Medvedev cancelled this project. But when Putin came to power again, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the project started yeah. on. So that's how it works. I have one question um, regarding the small. Is is the is the road functional now, or is it not? Yeah. The, no, part, of the, the road part of the road is functioning, function. but now it is free. It's not for me. Yeah. Um, the, the part of the, so the, this, the, this the road and yeah. the, the part of the road, the road which is functioning, oh, sorry. So it's that one. So actually, yeah. uh, so it's just going to the airport. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And I do that. I do that and all the, the time. It's very road convenient. Is not yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so with the stuff with the project, is 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 there um, plans for new? Um, Construction or is there plan to mean there to, well, to, to remove the road if, if that's an obvious issue that all of these companies stopped participating because they were sanctioned by other um, international organizations. But uh, is there a plan to construct a new road or make it around or, or destroy uh, this one or no, is it just no, no. There is nothing to do with that road. Nobody wants to <coughs> to destroy that road that was that is built. This one, they want to continue to build it. Um, like they are continuing. Yeah, they are. They are continuing. They claim that they will finish it until uh, 2018. When the World Cup, uh, football World Cup, will take yeah. place in Russia. Yeah. So they will continue to build it, and by 2018, they will we will have completed it. So there's no plan to actually uh, even to, uh, to, to, to change, to, to no. move the road yeah, or, or yeah. do anything? No, the road is already built. It's already yeah, built. Yeah, it's already and, yeah. um, well, because in some countries they actually destroy it because something evil passed and in yes. such yeah. they will destroy it. I would say more, um, some of the stakeholders, because the road should have been opened uh, in 2015 or 14, uh, yes. should have been opened. Uh, and some of the stakeholders, they start uh, the suitcases, the, the, yeah, the lawsuits against our government to give the money back. Because they, uh, because the road wasn't <coughs> hasn't been built because of all these protests, because of cancellation of the creative and then starting again, and some of the stakeholders uh, want to get money from the government for this uh, delay. For this delay. So what is really asked for the construction company executives to do exactly? If the road is already being built and if, if it's continuing to be built regardless of the uh, issues implemented, what, what can what is asked for us? Mm, uh, 
I want to say uh, one interesting fact that, as we know, the European Bank for Extraction and Development and European Investment Bank withdrew, withdrew from this project, but Finch did not. But uh, they wanted to, but they didn't have some choice, and Russian Russian part of this private part, part, partnership project uh, was uh, pledging them to stay there, to stay in this project, because they were saying that there will, there will be a lot of profits there, you will have a lot of money, and so on. So the company actually believed in that and stayed in the project. So yeah, I know. Okay. So what have, what should be done now? Actually, yeah. So now, the first thing to do is not to allow uh, to build the infrastructure near this road. It is not important. Uh, so uh, what else? Um, the, some, some sum of money should be um, like donated uh, by all stakeholders to um, protect this area, uh, to build uh, this um, protective shields, shields yeah, around the road. to. Um, to grow the trees, uh, to do everything that is needed. And some of the stakeholders wanted to do that. Nothing has been done. It, uh, it, this case uh, started in 2004, and the construction started in 2007. And still, several years have passed, and uh, nothing has been done to protect anything, even this protective shield, nothing. Also, Vinci and the company didn't even try to um, save its face mm -hmm. because they didn't do anything to help them to recover this forest mm -hmm. or something. And, uh, Just to um, reduce social tension, the stakeholders should also make some kind of participation in uh, public uh, hearings uh, to cooperate with uh, activists, to talk with them, uh, to try to uh, find some solution. And um, in future as well, um, talking about the infrastructure, construction, um, the construction companies should um, should cooperate and should consult with um, ecologists first. Of all. Okay, our time is up for questions and answers. Um, we uh, we now have some time for some feedback from the judges. Um, judges, uh, anybody want to give some feedback? You go first. Okay. Uh, I thought you, you folks were very passionate about, uh, which I thought was very, very, you, you, you know, your uh, enthusiasm for the topic uh, came through, I thought. Um, and uh, clearly you're, you have a professional appearance and presentation style. I thought that was very good. Um, it, I, I, I did very. I very much like the use of uh, the graphics that you had and uh, charts and so forth. <coughs> I thought that helped uh, make a compelling case. I would have liked to have seen more uh, compelling data to support uh, the the uh, ec ecological damage. Um, you know, maybe some scientific statistics and so forth. Um, you know, citing you know referring to Greenpeace and their displeasure. You know, that, I don't know if that is. Uh, is as compelling to me as I, as, as maybe seeing the, the scientific data on on what you know this this many species are going to be displaced. Um, I mean the picture of the of the little uh, whatever was it a the wolf links, the links, links that, that was cute but <laughs> but I'd like to see a little bit more in terms of you know what are the various species uh, and 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 now we, these are gone and that sort of thing um, and and I guess. Maybe a little bit more support for the connection between uh, the corruption and, and the decisions that were made to pursue the road. Because uh, it, it's easy to say greed or corruption, but I like to. But I understand. I mean, I understand the limitations on time, and and, uh, and there's a culture thing. You know, that this is a, uh, this is Russia as compared to here. So uh, I, I, you know, have to take that into account and understand that you don't have time to explain the whole. Uh, uh, political system and so forth, and we know a bit about, you know, uh, through the news and so forth, and we'll put it into life, but I, I think you, you did a very good job. Um, I thought you did a very good job. I love the topic. Um, uh, I, I think you picked a really good topic. It was very interesting, and sitting here, I, I, I do understand what the issues are. Um, with that said, when you do, and, and I'm giving you constructive feedback, because I know y'all want to 
improve and do better. When you do a panel or a group presentation, it's difficult. Um, I thought you should break it up, meaning one person should give all of the background. You know, one person should talk about maybe the construction of the road. One person needs to talk about the, the business aspect. You know, you're appealing to the contractors, you're appealing to executives. So one person should have taken that issue. One person should have taken the environmental issue. And, um, and the reason is it allows us as a panel to see who's the subject matter expert. So when I have a question about the road itself or about government or about the environmental issues, it's easy to direct a question. You're not all speaking at once. You're not, and not that y'all did a good job. You didn't really speak over each other, but at the same time, it allows your audience to know who is the subject matter expert in particular areas. And you do want to present yourself that way. Um, and then when we ask questions, same thing. It's nice to be able to direct questions. Um, and then if you feel like you need to help or fill in, you know, you should do that. I thought the PowerPoint was really good. I agree with Kyle. Um, Y'all have, you know, there are a lot of animal lovers in every country. <laughs> so I'm one of them. You know, like I'm accused of treating animals better than my family members. But um, y'all could have, not that people want to see really graphic images, but when you really want to appeal to a group, like y'all are targeting executive contractors and you're targeting us, I promise you, with four people, there's one of us who's a real, who's very passionate about animals. And this looks great. And not that I want to see this animal in distress, <laughs> but let me tell you, you could, you can really move people. You, you really, this is a topic that you're going to get action because you appeal to our emotions. You know, because business is business. People want to make money. But if you can hone in and really get it, get someone to go, like, oh, that poor animal. Like, that's what I'm going to, you know, but when you, sh you, need, you can be a little bit more visual. And like I said, people don't want to see blood, blood, gore, but you could really go after the people who are animal activists. And then you tie that into, it's not just the animals, it's the whole environment. But, but um, yeah, I also think it's good to appeal to what, think about what motivates your audience. So if you're talking to the construction industry, you know, you might really think about what is it that they, what will make them want to change uh, the way that they behave and, and think about, you know, okay, well, show, maybe show them how it would be better for business in, in the long run, and you know, maybe the long range uh, benefits of, of pursuing a different uh, route. Right, and how we can be sustainable. You know, you want the environment, you want a sustainable environment, but we want to be able to sustain our businesses. So it's approach it in the sense that it wouldn't, we're not going to lose money by proposing a different route and to be more environmentally sensitive and also to put money up front to, um, you know, to restore anything, any part of the, the road or the environment that was damaged, you know. So, um, but it's a good topic. I, and I thought y'all did a good job. And um, I took French in high school, and I wish I had paid more attention. So I always, I have a, the very fact that you can come and speak, you know, I thought the English was very good. And uh, I admire mm -hmm. that. I do. Well, my, my comments are just driving back on. Um, I, I thought that the presentation was great, and I also am an animal lover, and I actually support the World Wildlife Federation and, and all the Greenpeace. And, any type of thing that I could get involved, I actually do get involved. <laughs> so this is a, a topic that I was very interested in when actually was looking at just general topics so, of uh, who's presenting. But um, I guess something just um, in addition to, I, I think more facts of, uh, real facts of what Greenpeace really said, of oh, this is what's going to happen, or this is what happened, it would definitely have been uh, very helpful uh, to support your um, Support your data, but I thought you did a great job on very uh, logical facts and, and presentation of um, present issues and and exposing the issues that happen and that uh, are continuously happening. Um, something that could have added um, uh, to be a little better, uh, perhaps, is to have um, a clear a set, clear expectations of what the us, the construction company executive.